everyone, welcome back to my channel, and if this is your first time here, hi. So, this project has been on my mind for some time now, and I finally got the chance to do it, and I am so happy with the way that it turned out. It was relatively easy to make, um, not too difficult at all, but there was a lot of steps involved. So if you're interested in seeing the process, then keep watching. First thing you want to do is determine the size, shape, and style you want your headboard to be. Through this list, I have found many different shapes of headboards and their names. We have decided to go with Belgrave. We've also decided that we're not just gonna do a headboard, we're also gonna have a frame, a wood frame around it. So that's what we're gonna do first. We're going to make our frame according to this website that I found, um, the way she did her frame, that is what we're gonna do. On average, a queen size mattress measures 60 inches wide. An average headboard measures 62 or 63 inches wide, but obviously you can make it as big or as small as you want. For us, because we're having a frame around it, we want our fluffy part, the foamed part on the inside, the padded part, the padded part to be 62 inches wide, long, big, whatever. Um, and then that way the frame is, you know, well over the side. So that puts our entire headboard measurement at 69 inches. Everyone, meet my husband. Husband, everyone. That was a, a great introduction, but you know. Now that we have cut our top piece of our frame to size, we want to cut out the rest of it. I found this bucket that is, you know, it would do the job to trace around to make the cutouts for the Belgrave design. So what we're doing now is measuring three and a half inches, since that is the width of our legs, these that are gonna be on the sides of the frame and be the legs also. Those are three and a half inches wide. So we're measuring that for where the top part of the curve is gonna start. So we've traced it out at the edges here. We've straightened it out so it will be straight here and straight here just to make it more, you know. Next, before we even cut it, this is going to be the top part of our cutout. We're only using this as a means of tracing. Because we're going to cut out this part and then we're going to keep cutting all the way down and then we're gonna, the circle part we're going to do on the other side. This was our initial first circle that we've traced with this bucket. And then we traced along our edges and our legs to give us the top part of it. After that, we determined our three and a half is our measurements, since it's the size of the legs and the size of this and all that stuff. So we want our curvature part to be the same width as everything else. So three and a half inches from <clears throat> here to here is there. And then using this curve that we've already drawn before, three and a half inches, we made points along. And then we didn't have a something big enough to trace around here, so I kind of just freehanded this curve that I've drawn here. But preferably, if you have you know, something to trace around, that would be the best. But, so, now we gotta do the same thing on the other side. We've got this piece cut out. This piece we're gonna use to trace the other side to make things in life a little easier. <laughs> 
So once again, measuring three inches, three, excuse me, three and a half inches from the curve to the next curve. Why are you using that accent? I didn't. In it. So we have cut out our top piece of our headboard. Um, I've also sanded a little bit to clean everything up a smidge. We're gonna set this aside and bring out the big piece. So we got a big piece of wood. Um, now what we're gonna do is cut it 69 inches, which is our number of choice. Now, the main difference between what we're doing here and what is on the main post that we're going by is she put fabric on this first, then attached it to this, and then did everything else. And she doesn't have any buttons or tufting things happening. So from now on, no more, no more posts. We're going by other things. Not necessarily one particular thing, just, you know, a multitude of inspirations. <laughs> In the original post that we were using to first start off with, it shows her cutting both this and this piece all at the same time. But we prefer to not. So we just measured our holes for where our buttons are going to go um, and we've determined that 11 inch spaces for the size headboard that we are having will be, will suffice. So we have 11 inch spaces in between each row and also, right? Between each button and row between each row. Yeah. So 11 is the magic number. Um, We've also got five buttons at the top, six in the middle, and five for the third row. If your headboard is bigger or smaller, this will all vary. And also, depending on however far apart and together tight or loose you want your buttons to be. So, but this is what works out for us. So now, we get to drill the hoods. So this top part here will be up against where the foam is going to start. And from here is where we're going to draw a line on this curved part. So we have just marked where the holes that we drilled previously are with the marker. Because we want it to be tufted, especially looking, we don't want to just leave it like this. We want to cut a little hole, not all the way through, just you know a little bit, so when we pull this button through, 
it'll seep in and give it that more of a tufted look because otherwise it'd be really difficult and stressful on the string to try to pull it and make it do its thing on its own. But instead of just cutting a circle out, we're going to cut a cross X shape out because when it comes to and we have our fabric going down on it, we want the tufts to, to be diamonds, like a diamond shape. So we're going to cut an X out. Not a huge one, mind you, just, you know, a little one to give it a little push in the right direction. So we're using a straight edge because we want the diagonals to go towards the other buttonholes. All right, so we are going to make our buttons. We need 16 of them. Um, I'm going by the instructions on this button kit that I have bought. There are two parts to the button. The top part and the part that has the loop inside of it for the string. There is a mold. There is a pattern trace out. So that's what we're gonna do now. Directions say to put the fabric wrong side up. This is the pretty side. This is the wrong side. We've chosen this fabric to use for both our headboard and our buttons um, because I wanted to make the buttons not stand out with everything else that's going on with the headboard. There's a lot of exciting things happening. I don't want the buttons to take away from that. So, moving on. Push the fabric into this mold. Take the top of this into the mold. You gotta kinda like force it in there. Then the fabric, you want this fabric to be as even centered around as possible. You're gonna shove this fabric down there then take the back end, loop facing upward, obviously. You're gonna push it into this mold. And there's, they also gave you this little butt, this little um, cap thing. You push the cap, the open end of the cap down so it doesn't mess up the back end of the, the loop. This will help to push it down there and make the button a button. You pop it out and voila. Now, if you've uh, misjudged your center pieces, then you're gonna have fabric popping out of the sides. And when you pop it in, you'll feel a little jolt of pop. <laughs> you'll feel it pop when it's in. And once it's in, it'll be very difficult to get it out. If you have any edges of your fabric that are, you know, little hairs, trim those off, but overall, here's our little buttons. So, with our fabric that we're using, it doesn't really matter what side of the fabric you mark on, because the outside, the outermost part of it, will be shoved inside of the button.
Now all we gotta do is cut the fabric down to size, staple the fabric down, and then put the frame on, and then we are done. So that wraps up today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Well, it's like 60 degrees outside. Hold on. I gotta consult my weather maps. It's 59 degrees outside right now. Why? Do I see my breath?